Session number three, participation in public life, and our chair for this session is Siobhan McKenna. Um, and Siobhan is Head of Equality, Diversity and Inclusion at the Public Appointment Service, which is Ireland's centralised provider of recruitment services across the civil and public service. Uh, Siobhan has spent 20 years in the non-profit and public sectors in London and five years in international development at the Open Society Foundation, uh, where she supported the global fight against HIV AIDS. So she's going to be joined on the stage by Susie Byrne, uh, Magella O'Keefe and Sinead Freel and just while they're getting themselves organised um, I understand from online that there were some issues with the lighting around the Irish Deaf Society um, from the Irish Deaf Society sorry uh, about the lighting uh, on the ISL uh, we think it's since been resolved apparently um, there was just a, a switch out in some of the plugs um, uh, so the unintended consequences please don't be uh, touching buttons and switches um, without the permission of the IT crowd um, just to make sure that that doesn't reoccur um, so hopefully we're ready to get started now and uh, over to Siobhan thank you very much Right, is everybody comfortable, ready to go? Great, yeah. okay. So, um, uh, good afternoon, I guess, at this stage, everybody. It's, it's great to be here. Um, as the, um, my name is Siobhan McKenna, and I, I won't go into my bio too much because we're not here to listen to me today. We're here to listen to, to these fabulous women beside me. Um, but it is really great to be on a panel talking about public um, participation with three women as well, because I think the intersectionality of disability and women can have, or, and your gender can have a big impact on outcomes across the board. So just for anybody who's at home or who's visually impaired or who's stuck behind one of the many pillars in this room, um, I'm a mixed race Irish woman, rapidly approaching 50, regrettably. Um, and I have a striped top on and a blue dress under that, and my hair is tied up, and I have black glasses on as well. So. Um, Without further ado, I'm just going to very quickly introduce um, the people who are on the panel with me, but they will tell you about themselves and their journey in participation in public life. So Susie Byrne is at the end there, Regional Manager, Na National Advocacy Service for People with Disabilities. Magella here beside me is County Kildare Access Network. And Sinead Friel is Chairperson of the National Advisory Council on Down Syndrome Ireland. And so um, we're going to hear from all of them today, and I'm going to start with Magella, and I think we're going to turn the house lights down a little bit, um, so it, it might impact um, on what you see at home. Hello, everybody. My name is Magella O'Keefe, and I had a successful business for 20 years with my husband outside NACE, and my life changed very suddenly in a very few days when I was diagnosed with a brain tumour. And because of it, I lost an awful lot of my sight and still losing it. Um, because of this, I lost my independence and my ability to work and drive. And six years ago, we made the decision to sell our home and business and move into Nace Town and live in a town for a better quality life. Uh, this created loads of new challenges for me. Now I wasn't working but I was out and about and I tripped over potholes and footpaths and obstacles in the path. I have a white cane. Um, I use it when I'm out and about, but I don't use it around the house or when I'm in a, a familiar setting. Um, 
I decided to start talking to other people with disabilities and how they dealt with these obstacles. So they told me to join an, an access group. And I knew nothing what an access group was, but recently there had been um, a disability, an access officer appointed in Clare County Council part-time. So we decided to form an access group. So, where's my clicker? Here it is. Is it working? Oh yeah. Right. Um, we meet monthly, and what do we do? We do audits, and what are we about? We are working to make our town inclusive and accessible for everybody as much as we can. Um, we do uh, campaigns like Make Way Day and Back and Five. That's a sign there that we did a spot in NACE where we took over um, ordinary parking spots and parked a wheelchair and had a sign on it back in five minutes. And we had this sign then to just make people aware of all the excuses that come up with for parking in disabled spots. One thing soon became obvious. When we were closing out actions and getting something repaired on one side of the town, the same thing was repeating itself. So in a way, it was like a revolving door. And we needed to look at a bigger picture and see how we could change this. So what really needed was to look at policy and future proofing by the group being involved in the design stage, rather than going back and trying to change things after it was done. So two of us decided to learn more about this and did a disability studies course in college. And we wanted to learn about the correct language and what was the rights of persons with disabilities. To make real change, we also needed a Kildare County strategy. So we organized a workshop of 122 people and a broad range of stakeholders were invited. This included directors from the county council, people from various departments, um, councillors. Then we also invited organisations like IWA and Irish Guide Dogs. But most important, we also invited people with disabilities. And they were the heart of this workshop. And we had a couple of questions. And um, this was very effective for future proofing. This is the six focus areas. Oh, sorry, that's us. Hold on. <laughs> this is the strategy. I forgot to press the button. Sorry. <laughs> Here we are. This is the sections and themes that we brought into the strategy. Meanwhile, the access groups were growing, and there were suddenly six of them in County Kildare. And we felt we needed an umbrella organization. This organization we called CCAN, County Kildare Access Network. We meet monthly and we invite, again, representatives of the different groups and the access officers. And we invented our own branding and flags and uh, signs and constitution and names. And this group is the voice of the six groups. And we also participate in all planning major decisions like um, county development plans, uh, public um, realm decisions. We work with the council on this. Meanwhile, the strategy was working away. And in 2022, we were ready to launch it. Um, on the strategy, we had actions, responsibilities, and a time frame. We'll get it there. There it is coming up. I'll find it in a second. Sorry. <laughs> um, the strategy was coming along and um, we had decisions on it and it was running great. Then COVID arrived and it put a pause on things. And suddenly there was parklets popping up everywhere and in town centres there was um, seating areas and people were meeting. But again, we weren't consulted and bad design cropped up. This is an example of Kildare Town, polka dots everywhere, obstacles everywhere, um, not inclusive seating. So the next stage then is we did get involved with the public realm team and we had NACE. And here you see good parking, no obstacles, uh, accessible friendly seating, and that was a success for us, a real big success for CCAN at that stage. No. Okay, so what else do we do? 
Um, we divided to celebrate a week of Kildare uh, Disability Week, and we incorporated this with International Day for Persons with Disability. Here we lit up loads of buildings, purple, uh, public buildings, public monuments, and we worked with the schools. So schools came out and they did signs for buildings that were empty. They went around to shops and decorated the windows purple, put a message in their own way and their own voice how they did it. Uh, we incorporated uh, local businesses, including big companies like the Curry Group and Intel, where their staff wore purple. And um, we also had an event one day, and that was where we invited organisations to come in uh, to the RS in County Kildare, and they all had their little stands, and they all told the public and the workers at Kildare County Council that this is what we're about, and this is who we are. Now, what happened then? Um, you can pages here. <laughs> Eventually, things were going well. Again, the, the, the um, group then decided to do some competitions. We were entered in a LAMA Community and Council Award for the strategy, and we won it, and we won the overall whole award for the whole competition. Following that, we also won two weeks ago the Tidy Towns competition for As I Am. So the groups has been growing, and we're going forward now and getting there. Having said that, we still need change. And there's a lot more to go on and do. And we do need access officers full-time in each of the county, county councils. Um, most of them are um, on a part-time role, and it's not fair. We are volunteers, most of us, and we are making change, but we will continue to work in partnership with Cadere County Council to realise our vision. And our vision is working to make County Kildare inclusive and accessible to all. And that is what ACCESS is about. Everybody needs to work together and to try to live and be accessible for all. Finally, I have a small little video just to show you about what we have done. Grant. Our vision is for County Kildare to be universally accessible to all. We've already made considerable progress and we've lots more exciting plans underway. Here's the story so far. We've developed the County Kildare Access Network, which consists of representatives from the six local access groups across the county. The network and access groups, comprising of people who have unrivaled insight and understanding, has been central to this work. The real catalyst for change in our journey started with the development of the County Kildare Access Strategy. Working closely with key stakeholders, we identified the key challenges faced by disabled people and then put in place actions to address them. The Cubby Sensory Hub is an easy to use, immersive, safe, personal space of sound and vision and is fully accessible to help people with sensory needs. And it's just a relaxing place, a safe environment to switch off and yeah. just chill out. And that's really important for Avril, isn't it? Yeah. yeah? yeah. Mm -hmm. The Sensory Pod is a state-of-the-art, calming, safe space, particularly effective for those with autism. In addition to the physical infrastructure, we've also focused on raising awareness and changing attitudes and mindsets around disability. The Kildare Inclusion in Schools project aims to create positive understanding and awareness of disability and disability equality amongst children and young people and provide students with practical skills around physical accessibility and inclusive communications. As the next up and coming generation, it is our responsibility to actually make that difference and add these changes into our community because we are the future planners, builders, designers and it will be our job to adapt society for those with any disabilities. So far we've delivered two changing place facilities, one more under construction and two more in the pipeline. Changing place facilities are combined toilet, shower and changing rooms, specially designed for use by people with complex and multiple disabilities. The change in place here is absolutely the best I've seen in my 17 years experience. The Sea Reader Pen promote independent reading and learning for anyone suffering from reading difficulties such as dyslexia. The Dursleys had everything they wanted. The Community Bus is a joint initiative between Angarda Shikona and Kildare County Council. 
In addition to its day-to-day -day use for community policing, its services are used to support community groups and vulnerable minorities such as disabled people. Our World Toy Resource is an educational tool comprising of a collection of inclusive toys with disabilities used to teach children acceptance, normalise difference and promote better understanding of the barriers faced by disabled people in our community. Kildare County Council is jam card friendly across the organisation. The jam card allows people with a learning difficulty, autism or communication barrier to tell others they need just a minute, discreetly and easily. We've also rolled out several important public awareness campaigns such as International Day of Persons with Disabilities where we light up prominent landmarks around Kildare and Purple, the adopted colour of disability. We are striving to create an environment where disabled people have equal opportunity to access services and participate within their communities. Our commitment to this is steadfast and we're excited to continue on this journey. Great, you guys have definitely been busy in Kildare. Um, <laughs> uh, Susie, do you, do you want to go next? Go for it. Or are you going to stay seated? Yeah. Yep. Grant. Okay, great. Um, I think, are you okay for the slides to put them up now? Or do you want to? Put? Okay. Sinead, are you okay with that? Is that okay? Yeah. I was expecting. Um, yeah, stay sitting. Yeah, 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 perfect. Okay. <laughs> Hi, my name is Sinead Friel. I'm delighted to be here today to speak to you about my experience and working in Africa at sea. I hope this can help you and other people understand what I do. I am a graduate of most. Most means my opinion, my vote. I am the chairperson of the NEC, the National Advisory Council of Town Centre Maryland. I have a busy life. I work and have lots of interests. I work to help people with Down Syndrome have a vote. <coughs> My interest in Africa at Sea started when I started Mode Chorus with Dance in Jamar Ireland. I learned about politics and how important it is to vote. I learned about making decisions and having a say that I think. This has helped me my opinions and make good decisions in my everyday life too. This is an important skill for us all. The NSC is made up of seven people. We are the voice of adults with Down syndrome. We talk about issues that are important for us with Down syndrome. We meet every month and discuss issues that are important for people with Down syndrome. Down syndrome Ireland listens to us and hears what we have to say. Like the adults we represent, it, we all have Down syndrome, but we're all different. We share some interests and challenges. We share some dreams and hopes, but we're all different. We are interested in self capacity, adult education, employment, the environment, housing, transport, and much more. We want to be the best people we can be. And this is what we want for all people with Down syndrome. 
We want to play a part in it is being the voice of people with Down syndrome. There are many good things about being a member of the NAC and other advocacy groups. You can build your confidence and your new skills like respectful listening, giving opinions, knowing your rights, how to speak at meetings, how to be in charge of your meeting, how to be an officer of the NAC, talking to other others about what you do in the NAC. <coughs> we worked on the Dance Syndrome Ireland strategy. We gave our opinions on health, being part of the community, edu education and employment. I was delighted to give the opening speech at the Dance Syndrome Ireland ATM last year. I represented people with Down syndrome. It is important to have our voice heard. We have, um, we have meetings with the CEO and other staff in Down syndrome Ireland. We advise them on many things like easy to read documents. This is an excellent way for us to advocate for people, people with that syndrome. We had our we had our first AGM last year. It was a great success. We were working on to set up original advisory councils. We want adults all around Ireland to be involved. <coughs> we advocate to others, sorry, I meant to say, we, we advocate in other ways too. My apologies. We had a say on a new parent book. We made promotion videos we run the Dad Central Ireland resources page. We give advice on employment. We were delighted to meet Minister Simon Coveney and to tell him about the issues that are important for us. We visited, we visited Leicester House. We have a very exciting year ahead. We are going to continue to work hard on advocacy. From my experience, I have learned that if you want change, you have to use your voice. You have to vote. You have to encourage others. You have to listen to your team. You have to keep learning, be confident, and we are stronger together. Thank you for listening. Thanks for that, Sinead. That was really insightful and powerful. And now, Susie. Great. Thanks very much. And thanks very much to the NDA for the invitation today. Um, I'm not here to talk about the National Advocacy Service, contrary to whatever is in the programme. I was invited here in my capacity as a board member of Erin Road Air and um, Irish Rail. Um, and I want to talk about the um, inclusion of people with disabilities in state boards um, and state committees today and my experience of it. 
So um, it's ironic that we are in Lansdowne Road um, today. I don't call it the other name. Uh, traditionalist, and for the purposes of people at home and those people who um, um, have low vi vision, I am a cisgendered white woman wearing a black top and dark trousers. I am fat, feminist and over 50, and I wear glasses and I have uh, short brown hair. Um, in no November the 16th, 2017, I was in Lansdowne Road at a conference. And after the conference, um, I use a mobility scooter. And after the conference, I went to Lansdowne Road to get the train. And I um, arrived at the train uh, station. The dart pulled up. There was no staff member around to assist me to get on the train. The driver had to get off the train, go find the ramp, which was not easy. Everybody was looking at me. I wanted the ground to open up and swallow me. And um, yeah, it was awful. And I sent a tweet. And those of you who know, I tend to tweet a bit. And um, although I'm less often under Mr. Musk, but anyway, that's another story. Um, and the tweet re read, thanks to the dark driver who got out and put me on the dark this evening at Lansdowne. Apologies to other passengers delayed while we looked for the ramp. We need stations staffed properly for full access. And I tweeted that at Irish Rail. As I was meant loads, or often would do actually, tweet at Irish Rail about different things and tweet at other public bodies. And I had been involved in discussions with other people with disabilities about access to trains and buses as well. And not just about physical access, but the access is for people with cognitive disabilities, with uh, mental health issues, those who are neurodiverse. Lots of us were facing issues about access in public transport. There was a lot of advocacy around these issues as well at the time. And somebody said to the minister at the time, it would be a really good idea to put somebody with a disability on each of the state transport boards. And that's what happened. He decided to appoint disabled people to state transport boards. And a campaign was run through um, stateboards.ie. And I would encourage anybody who's interested in the whole area of um, being appointed to a state uh, board to look at stateboards.ie and register to find out what sort of positions are coming up um, in state boards. Now, I applied thinking there was no chance I would be appointed. I am far too gobby. I don't agree with the minister on many things, right, at the time. But I decided to apply. I went through the process, which was run by the public appointments service, through the public appointment service. And the Department of Transport interviewed me, the civil servants. It wasn't the minister. It was civil servants who interviewed me. I talked about it. And I have a prior experience. And I should say, I've been involved in lots of things over my life, right? I've been involved in the community and voluntary sector in my life. And I work, as um, you might know, in the National Advocacy Service for People with Disabilities since 2006, 2007. So I have lots of experience in doing things as well as causing trouble. Um, and the civil servants <coughs> liked me and thought it, uh, you know, that I would pass muster. So my name was put forward and I was asked which board would I like and I said Irish Rail. Um, and I was one of the five selected. And that was in 2018. There was somebody appointed to Bus Air and Dublin Bus, CIE, the National Transport Authority and Irish Rail as well. And I was appointed in 2018, and that was for a three-year period. The, the board memberships were then extended to five years, and I was reappointed in 2021. So I would stay on the board until 2026. What a board member does, it isn't my job to make Irish Rail accessible. More is the pity, because when I turned up at Connolly Station this morning to come to Lansdowne Road, the lift wasn't working. Um, <coughs> And the lifts are being replaced in Connolly Station, so we're reliant on the lift you, uh, provided by Lewis. And the Lewis lift wasn't working this morning. So luckily enough, because I use a mobility scooter, I was able to go across to Tower Street to take the train. But it isn't my job as a board member, and neither do I experience Irish Rail in all its accessibility because I'm a board member. Most people don't know that I'm a board member when I'm using the train. But my job as a board member really is to listen to what's happening in the company, to ask questions, to make decisions, along with my fellow colleague board members, about all sorts of things. I've learned huge amounts in the last five years about governance. I thought I knew things, but I didn't really know things. I've learned about procurement. I've learned about you know, all sorts of things about safety. I'm also involved in things to do with um, equality, diversity and inclusion because of my experience um, you know, as a, a lesbian disabled woman um, that has a, a huge passion in the area of equality and human rights. 
I know what my responsibilities are and what they are not, and I'm very grateful to other disabled people who also realise that I'm not the person that's going to fix everything. You know, and also there is a disabled persons you are disability user group in Irish Rail who do great work in advising the company on, on various initiatives as well. There are also amazing staff who've done huge amounts in the last number of years to try and make the, the railway more accessible. Um, there's a, it's a job, you know, um, as a board member. There's lots of things I attend board meetings. I've actually, I'm missing my first ever board meeting by being here today, and I want to thank the chairman who gave me the, uh, the permission to attend today to talk about this. But, you know, I, it would be, it takes up two days a month between attending meetings and reading hundreds of pages of documentation. Um, you know, and we have a public responsibility. We are uh, the minister's appointees for oversight of the company. You know, and we're the public's appointees, and that's one of the things I suppose I see myself not just as somebody with a disability on a state board, but as a public appointee, as a consumer's representative. <coughs> so, I have a lot of things to say about state board membership, and not all positions on state boards are paid, and I think they should be paid, and I think very strongly that disabled people who are being appointed to state boards to give their experience and their expertise as disabled people should be paid for being in the room. And too often disabled people attend meetings and everybody else is getting paid for being there, but disabled people aren't. And that needs to be looked at. Um, it's really important that there are opportunities for people to be mentored into state board membership and you know to be given early career experience and for people to have the confidence to apply and not just to think if you wait until you're older and you've got letters after your name or whatever in or you know for going for board members there are lots of mediocre able-bodied people on state boards right i'm saying it here now so let let, let there be some excellent disabled people appointed Having a disabled person on the state board uh, is not there to abdicate everybody else's responsibility in the room. My mere presence has made people think about things, I hope, a bit, okay? And to think about accessibility, and I do think the board takes huge interest in the area of accessibility because we are down the road, we're not far off level access trains coming in eventually in some parts of the country. I'm not the expert on everything around disability, and neither am I expected to be. I do pipe up and I have talked over the last few years about quiet trains, about support for people who are neurodiverse, about the whole area of people who have an intellectual disability. I've seen great initiatives brought in like jam car training, like the, um, you know, the, the dementia support work that is, uh, has been ongoing. There's huge work that's going. There's even social stories now being developed um, to support people who take train journeys by staff who have an interest in that area and came forward with ideas. Um, the whole thing about state boards is also that we're not just there because of our disability. We're there because we are knowledgeable about many other areas in life or that we have the right to be seen um, as wanting to build careers, experience, etc., not just about the whole area of disability itself. For the benefit of people at home or those who low vision, this is a photograph of a mock-up of a carriage. Um, and it's in a warehouse in Inchicore Works. And I love Inchicore Works, by the way. It's a fascinating place to be. It's full of history. Um, and it's full of amazing people who are working at repairing trains or preparing new trains. And this carriage, it shows um, a ramp that's been extended and it's not how it'll look when it's out but this is a mock-up that was presided by, provided by the train manufacturers and we've been able to go and have a look at this train see what it'll be like these are the new darts basically right this is what dart is going to look like um, a carriage is going to look like and what this photo shows is level access there's a little platform that's going to come out of each carriage and meet the platform itself it's a little electronic or you know, a uh, slot that will come out of every carriage. The second photo there shows, it's sort of, no, sorry, when I sit in the scooter and take photos, they're really crap. So <laughs> that um, second photo is the, the, the place, and it's a bigger space for a wheelchair user to take. Um, and it's a designated space, and it's in blue, and God forbid anybody will put a suitcase near it, right? <laughs> um, so, and th that was just showed, what, you know, what the darts will look like. 
it's going to take a few years. And the one thing I've learned is it takes a long time to buy a second train, right? So they are buying them and they're buying new carriages every year and let us not go into recession because it might be the first thing that gets cut. And that's what happened in the teens in terms of the noughties and the teens that the, the railway system was underinvested. And we really need to see these uh, level access. The work also, we need to find the money to make sure that the platforms themselves are made accessible because we won't be getting staff in all the stations and neither should I have to rely on another staff member to get on and off a train in the first place, right? That's the whole thing. And it's about making lifts, um, protecting lifts as well because lifts get vandalised, lifts don't like seawater, they break down. There's a whole reasons why things fail and I've learned all of that from being on the board so, and why things don't work and the things you have to try and do to make things work. So those trains are coming and hopefully I won't have to send tweets in a few years' time. And hopefully people, no matter what their disability, will be able to access rail and public transport. And it will be seen as a full embodiment of the United Nations Convention on the rights of people with disabilities and how it's brought in. And also we won't have to give notice to get on a train, which I think, you know, I'm one of the turn up and go right fraternity I don't like giving notice you know sometimes I'll do it particularly for intercity or a smaller station or something like that but many of us are rebels against the four hours period okay and we just turn up and go and we wait until there's assistance if there isn't staff there so in future um, I suppose for state board membership in particular I think we have to have more targeted recruiting of disabled people and we you know where it is relevant for people with disabilities views and expertise to be around a table it, we should be looking in education in health and in the environment and other areas I think the sports council has somebody with a disability on the state board from a disability and and I think the transport I'm not sure how what other boards might have people you know with experience of disability um, on the board we need mentoring and support of, of, of potential board members and of newly appointed board members, you know, not just the induction into your board, but also just general issues around state board membership for so the disabled people get to talk to each other. One of the sad things is that I don't see the other appointed board members and the other state transport boards. I'd love to have chats with them to see what it's been like for them, but we don't have that opportunity to come together. And I think it would be really good to share our experiences and I also think that all state board appointees need training in equality and diversity um, you know, for all their lives. There's a public sector duty for state organisations to ensure that you know, all their services are, you know, um, are fully accessible and equal for all. And board members need training in that issue and the issue to ensure that the services provided by the organisation that they have the governance responsibility for you know, are providing fully equal and accessible services. So that's it. There, thanks very much. That was great. Thanks very much. And, and as uh, the representative of the organisation that does a lot of the state board recruitment, it was really great to hear that. And actually, we need more uh, people from diverse backgrounds on all our state boards, whether it's disability, migrant, LGBT, whatever it is. We need a much more diverse uh, perspective guiding our public institutions. Um, and publicjobs.ie um, is the website to go to if you are interested. Um, do we have time for questions? <laughs> oh, I'm acutely aware we're standing between you and your lunch, so we'll keep it very brief. Is there any questions online, or does anybody in the audience have a particular... I can see a hand there at the back there. Um, thank you very much for the presentation. I have a concern um, and the question with regards to the DAT group. And um, one of the biggest issues in Ireland is attitudinal, behavioral, and this kind of stuff that is affecting lots of things in regards to issues with disability. So what are some of these strategies um, the company has put in place in regards to these spaces that will be allocated for people with disabilities? We don't want to see your station, your train station, looking like the bosses out there that have um, spaces for people with disabilities, but they are not being granted to people with disabilities. And 
they wouldn't be used for other purposes. Because if you say this is a space for a wheelchair user, make sure it's for a wheelchair user and not a babysitter or, or the thing else. So what are some of the strategies of your company put in place to make sure these spaces are left for people with disabilities? Thank you. Um, so I'm not responsible for the implementation of policy, but I can tell you what the sorts of things that have happened that I've seen happen. And particularly in intercity trains, there are now customer service operatives, CSOs, who are on the train. And they are, um, one of the things that I know that they've been doing a lot of is ensuring that the spaces on those trains are accessible for people and are, are free of luggage. They also check on people to make sure, and one of the things, the great fears that I think a lot of us have when we're on a train is whether there'll be somebody at the other end to get us off the train, okay? Lots of the confidence, you want to be able to be confident as a train user, no matter what your, your disability is. And the CSO's presence on the train, if there isn't somebody at the station itself, the CSO is able, they're trained in disability equality as well and awareness, and they can support people then to, to access um, the train, um, to get off the train when it's needed. When it comes to um, the DART and those spaces on the DART and making sure that they're accessible, there won't be customer service operatives on the train itself, but I think there will need to be a public awareness campaign. And there is a public awareness campaign around Dublin bus, I think, at the moment, because unfortunately, there is um, only a priority for people with disability. I think on trains, it's different in terms of the spaces are seen as spaces for people with disabilities. And um, there's also going to be priority seating on those trains um, and uh, seating that, you know, comes up and down if people prefer that than to the statutory seating. I think that we need to, um, that bus drivers need to be, you know, and I'm moving into Dublin bus space, it's not really my zone, but I would say, and I've always, I have my right to my opinions, you know, that dr drivers need to be supported to enforce <laughs> those spaces so that people with disabilities can take those spaces rather than, people seeking the charity and the goodwill of others to fold up a buggy or to, to step aside so that somebody with a disability can use those spaces. Great, thanks. I'm going to have to call it there, I think, because um, we'd all like some sandwiches, I think. So just, ladies and gentlemen, round of applause for our fabulous panel. Thank you so much for sharing. <laughs>